Welcome into the studio and this is a speed video. Okay, so speed it right up to give you a general overview of how I did this drawing. For those that want to see a real in-depth tutorial, I've got six hours on my Patreon channel, TF3. But the beauty of speed drawings, and I know lots actually love them, some don't. And the reason they usually don't is because the voiceover is usually just music and nothing instructional is given. So I'm doing it a bit different. For the next five or six minutes, you're going to see this drawing go all the way to the completion from the very basics and the beginnings, but I'm going to talk over it and tell you exactly what I did. So this is my reference photo I took a while back of a running horse. I knew as soon as I saw that horse running, it'd make a really good drawing. I've got light blue pastel matte paper, and I've just indicated where the highlights are going to be. Okay, that, because it's on tone paper, paper, has created kind of a tonal underlayer by just using white. Now I'm putting in some of the background. Now why am I doing that at this early stage and why am I not doing all the background? Well, I like to put some background in place just so that I can then judge the tonal values that's next to it because drawing and realism is really judging one area against another to get that accuracy. Now I put some white in really early on the highlights. Once again, that helps me judge light against dark. And now I'm going in with some blues for the shadows. Don't always think shadows are gray. Very often, and especially on white subjects, if you've got a bright blue sky above, you'll see that blue, usually fairly vividly in the shadow areas. I'm using the pencils on this side. I could have done this with pan pastels but using them on the side in a small drawing like this you can do everything with just pencils really. The beauty of pans is for large areas in particular because they help to save your pencils from wearing out so fast. On top of the underlayer I was then adding some detail on the neck and now I decided okay let's get the background in place. Once again I did it with pencils as you can see so don't think you need to buy sticks or or um, pan pastels. I went in with a general color first, then the darks, which creates a bit of a distant texture, and then going lighter on top. Now the important thing is to keep the background soft and blurry and not to have any hard edges there at all. If I put hard edges there, I'd lose that feeling of recession and blur. So I want my main detail or the hard edges to be only really on the horse and a little bit of grass that's actually under the hoofs. So same process again, general color, then the darks. And I'm creeping up on it gradually. Okay, if I'd put the darks in first, I'd probably mud yet. So you can see just going in with darks. Rest of my hand on glassine paper so I'm not smudging the work I've already done. And this was quite a complicated background. I wanted to show my members on Patreon with the long version exactly how something like this is done because you see backgrounds very similar in dog portraits and pet portraits. So it's important they knew how to do it. Now backgrounds like this are really very time consuming. Also, there's no real shortcut for it. it took me as long to do the background as the horse itself. see how there's no hard edges in that background as I said and now I've switched back over to the horse generally mapping in where the lights and darks are going to be first that always helps me along I try to make everything as logical and easy to follow as I possibly can with pastels we generally go in or I'm generally going general color mid-tone then the dark texture then the highlight on top Now you can see by the texture of the fur hair on the horse that this one is actually kept outside quite a lot and is running free for a huge part of the year. So it hasn't got that short glossy coat that you sometimes find. The, the shadows, you can see how much blue and purple once again is in the shadows. The grasses underlayer with pencils. I could have done it with pans or sticks. 
Now as I generally and gradually work my way forward, there's more detail in the background and in the, the grasses. As I'm coming forward, it's going from the extreme blue to more detail, more refinement, to the point right under the horse. It's on the same distance from the camera, so that area also needs to be in very sharp focus. Otherwise, it just wouldn't make sense if I didn't have the grasses underneath at the same degree of sharpness. Now once again, no real shortcut for grasses like this. It's very similar in technique to fur. So general color, dark texture, highlights on top. And I'm going back to the horse again. I wanted to prove with the drawing this size, the pastels can really cope with it. To have a whole body horse and some of the landscape in the background makes it, you know, a lot of a lot of um, subject and detail quite on a small scale. Now I'm holding lots of green pastels, and you don't get with greens you don't get a lot of natural colours in the pencils, okay? Lots of them are super vibrant green, so be very careful with that when you want to do something that looks natural and realistic. Here I'm adding more of the foreground, so we've got richer colours in the foreground, more tonal value, so lights and darks, that will also help to push the background and fade it into the distance. Now I'm adding some more of that detail. The tail, I didn't want to make it as um, raggedy looking as it does in the reference photo, so I've tidied it up a little bit more. I didn't want it too distracting. And now I'm working on the whole drawing at one time, trying to bring it all up to a nice level of refinement and finish. And here's the finished drawing taken under studio light so you can get to see the colours just as they were. Now, as I said, there's a six hour version on my Patreon art channel. Don't think you could never sit through six hours. You don't have to. You can obviously skip through parts and just see the critical bits that you want to, to learn about. So I hope to see you there soon and enjoy your day.